Hey everyone, and welcome back to this class, the NumPy stack in Python. In this brand new section of the course, we are going to talk about machine learning. We're even going to apply deep neural networks to help us solve a problem. Now this section of the course was not originally part of this course, but after a few years, I've decided to include it. You could even think of this section as like a machine learning mini course. Let me explain why. So firstly, this is a course about machine learning prerequisites. That's why we talked about NumPy, Matplotlib, SciPy, and Pandas, because they are useful when you're actually doing machine learning. The word prerequisites means something you have to learn before you learn the thing in question. So for example, knowing how to add and multiply are prerequisites to calculus. Surely you would not walk into a calculus class without first mastering basic arithmetic. It would be like trying to read Shakespeare but still not knowing your ABCs. Bad idea. So anyway, hopefully you understand what the word prerequisites means. So what does that have to do with this course? Well, since this is a course which focuses on some prerequisites to machine learning, that means we don't want to cover actual machine learning in it. We want to cover prerequisite techniques that will be used later in machine learning, should you want to learn about it. And in those machine learning courses, because we're working with highly advanced algorithms, we cannot spend our time teaching people their ABCs. I expect you to know the basics of spelling and grammar before you try to write a storybook. Otherwise, let's be real, your storybook is going to suck. Okay, so it may seem that I'm contradicting myself. Why would I then make a section about machine learning if this course is for machine learning prerequisites only? By the way, I know this is quite an involved explanation, but it's designed to help you. Believe it or not, what I'm talking about right now is helping you put all the techniques you're learning about into perspective. One of the most common questions I get, one that I get daily, sometimes even multiple times in one day, is what order should I take your courses in? And related to that, what order should I learn each topic in? Because if you don't know the right order, then you're going to try to learn the hard thing before the easy thing, and then you'll become very frustrated because nothing will make sense. Okay, so why does this section exist? Well, if we take some of my easiest machine learning courses, say natural language processing, this course is all about applying basic machine learning to language problems. But what surprised me was that there are so many students who don't understand what machine learning is to begin with. This leads to all sorts of weird misconceptions and incorrect assumptions. And the problem was I had no place to point these students towards because no such material existed to explain the basics of machine learning. Here's the real problem. Most people trying to market machine learning to you are trying to do the opposite of what I'm trying to do. Most people want to make machine learning sound as complex as possible. They want to make it sound really magical. Then they want to give you their high-level, intuitive explanation. Then they want to give you two or three lines of code to accomplish something. But the problem is that they leave you still thinking that you've done something magical. So it's like they have this two or three line magic spell, and that's basically all they know. They can't modify that magic spell for new scenarios. They don't even know how the magic spell works. But in fact, the reality is the opposite. I prefer the realistic approach. Instead of making machine learning sound magical, I want to make machine learning sound as dumb as possible. In fact, I'm going to demonstrate to you that it's nothing more than a geometry problem. This is real intuition. This is better thinking, because instead of thinking you're doing magic, you can use basic spatial reasoning skills to understand machine learning, and this puts you in a much better place to actually implement machine learning algorithms. Here's another great reason why I think this section belongs in this course. In this section, we'll be making use of the scikit-learn API, which we haven't really covered in any of my courses except in passing. This library is also part of the NumPy stack. I've always thought it was pretty trivial, and so I've typically assumed that there was never any need to demonstrate how to use it. However, 
Experience has shown me otherwise. So we've got NumPy, SciPy, Matplotlib, Pandas, and now Scikit-Learn. Scikit-Learn fits perfectly into this group. Finally, let's talk about how this is going to help you put learning machine learning into perspective. Firstly, what does it mean to learn machine learning? Well, normally we're talking about understanding machine learning algorithms. So what does that mean? That means you're learning the theory behind the algorithm. What modeling assumptions does it make? How do we express that model mathematically? How is that model derived based on geometrical and probabilistic principles we already know about? Then, once we have the algorithm, how do we implement it in code? This is the most important part. If you can't implement something in code, then you don't really understand it. This is my number one rule. Sometimes people think learning machine learning is simply learning how to use the scikit-learn API, but this is wrong. As you'll see, you can learn this in 20 minutes. We are going to do exactly that. This barely scratches the surface of machine learning, but in this course, that is the point. I want you to learn how to use this API so that when it comes down to writing your own version, you'll have the right context. You know what your code is supposed to do and how it's supposed to behave. So learning about the scikit-learn API isn't because I want to make you proficient in the scikit-learn API. It's because I want you to write your own code and your code is going to do what the scikit-learn API already does. That is when you know you truly understand the algorithm you've learned. The final thing I want to say here is that this section is totally optional. This is a later addition to this course, meaning that hundreds of thousands of students have already made it along just fine without it. The most important part of this course is just figuring out how to do things you want to do using the NumPy stack. In order to start learning machine learning, you already know what vectors and matrices are, you know what data looks like, you know statistics, and you know why you want to make plots and visualize your data. This course is just teaching you the specific computer commands to accomplish those things which you already know about. It is not for new concepts. And so this machine learning section is sort of a black sheep of this course. It does contain a few new concepts, but hopefully not too many. So if you feel comfortable with these concepts already, then of course feel free to skip ahead.